Christ. God spoke to me that we need to come together as the body. You know, whether you're Anglican or, or Methodist or SDA or whatever you are, or Pentecostal, as long as you believe in Jesus, it's time for us to stop. You know, the hand is out there doing something. The leg is also somewhere trying to do something. And we come together as the body. And God wants us to gather so he can speak to us. So we're having this conference next month. We are even, I know Hope FM has listeners all, all over the country. Someone might be in Kericho, someone might be in, in Kisumu and saying, oh, what can I do? So we've thought about that. We have, we've got some really affordable accommodation, just 600 shillings per night, very close to this place as well. So someone can plan to come and be part of it. Mm -hmm. We have amazing speakers, some of them local, some of them international. And the key thing is we want to hear from God. We're going to be, this particular conference is going to be discerning the times. That's the theme. So, yeah, so I would really want to encourage everyone listening, begin, just mark those dates and make sure you don't miss that conference. You will be blessed. Amen. So moving into the book. Um, so this book is called Upsetting the Status Quo. The status quo is a big word, but really what it means it means the state of affairs and upsetting means that you have to change i think the easiest way i can come up with a scripture that you know that points to that mm -hmm. is in the book of acts where the bible says that paul and silas they went to a certain city and the men said the men who have turned the world upside down have come here also yeah. So I believe that uh, God has to shake certain things, move certain things for his purpose to be done. And so this book really talks about our individual lives, but it also talks about the state of the body of Christ, the state of the church. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, when, when God gave me this burden, this was way back, as I said, I wrote this book in 2004. God, you know, God led me to write it. And, you know, I would write things, but I, sometimes you don't really understand why God is leading you because I felt it's such a strong burden. But over the years, I've begun to realize that something is wrong with us as the body of Christ. And I would say particularly in Kenya, I mean, there are some amazing things God has done, but having had an opportunity to move around the world i have come to a place i've said god we need revival mm -hmm. so uh in in 2005 i'll just give some two examples in 2005 god opened for me a door i went to south korea when i got to south korea i was invited to speak at a prayer mountain so i found people praying and you would think that these people, you know, you could mistake them for something else. I mean, they are rolling on the ground. Mm. They, are, you know, they are praying with so much passion, you know. But when you look outside in the parking lot, they have the best top range cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are all the, just imagine all the top range cars. They are parked out there. But when you see these people praying, you would think that, you know, they are crying out to God for the next meal. So the thought that came to me, I said, in Africa, I think the gospel that we embraced is so much tied to needs that if you took out asking God for things and asking God for, we would find our place, I mean, ourselves in a place where we don't have any more passion to pray. That's what really came to me. I was like, what are these guys praying for? I mean, they have everything, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was one instance and, and I could see the passion. I could see, in fact, at that prayer mountain, I was told some people had been fasting and praying for an entire year. Wow. They, they would miss at least one meal and what, are, what they're all, all they're seeking for, they just want to know God. They just want to get closer to God. You know, it's, it's not about that they are poor or they are, you know, they need something. They just want God, you know, then in 2016, God opens another door for me and sends me to Indonesia. Now, Indonesia is a country that just literally turned me upside down, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, upset my status quo. 
Indonesia is a very interesting country. It's, it's the largest Muslim country in the world. But the church is so on fire. Mm -hmm. That, you know, you, you, you get to a place and you wonder, are we going to be in the same heaven with these guys? Mm -hmm. Because they have such a pure, genuine, you know, love for God. Uh, you know, there, there are things that we talk about, you know, that for them it's foreign. They mm. can't believe that someone can be a believer and do certain things or live a certain way. Because, again, part of the reason is the persecution. There's, there, there's persecution. There's, it's, not, it's not a fun or it's not um, like a, a, a license. I mean, sometimes in Kenya it's really nice to just be a Christian, you know. <laughs> Everybody will respect you if you say Buana Sfiwe. But there it is the opposite. Someone comes out of this background and, and now that they're believers, they've got to move on. So now the book Upsetting the Status Quo talks about the time is short. Time is short. Jesus is coming back. And Jesus is coming back for a church that is without spot, a church that is without wrinkle, a church without blemish. And when I begin in the introduction, I talk about John the Baptist. And, and there are things that, as I was even writing this book and reading, I realized that there were so many things that parallel John the Baptist coming to introduce Jesus at his first coming mm -hmm. and us as the church who are supposed to prepare for the second coming. So John the Baptist arrived on the scene when there was... You know, there was so much uh, religious tradition going on. So a lot was going on, but God was not really uh, moving. God was not working. Uh, it wasn't, I mean, the churches were, I mean, the synagogues were there. Everything was there. Uh, and so John the Baptist comes and the Bible says, I think it's Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12, where Jesus Christ says that from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom suffers violence. So which really means that John the Baptist ushered in a new dispensation. There was something about the, that man mm -hmm. that upset the status quo. So that's really the, the whole point of this book. That when John the Baptist comes, things could not remain the same. You know, he, he shook not just... The, the the religious people but he he literally shook society i mean people from government from you know from police officers from you know businessmen people would go to the wilderness and they would it is not him calling them they would go to the wilderness and they would go looking for him and the question i ask myself is what did this man carry that would cause people to leave their offices, leave their businesses, leave political places, and come to this man in the wilderness. And, and, and he had such an impact on, you know, on the nation that you know, everything changed. You know, people would, would ask, what can we do? You know, and you tell them, repent, stop doing this. And I really believe, Jackton, that the church must be relevant. The church must be the light. The church cannot keep crying about the darkness. We cannot keep cursing the darkness. We have to be the light. Because the days we are living in, the Bible says in the book of, I, of what? Isaiah chapter 60, darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness shall cover the people. But the Bible says, arise and shine. For your light has come and the glory of God has risen upon you. So instead of us lamenting about, you know, what is going wrong and, and the evil, we must understand that we are the ones to shine. We are the ones to bring forth the glory of God. But unfortunately, in many cases, we have lost our saltiness. And Jesus Christ says, what will happen if the salt loses its saltiness? So when you find a place where people, I was actually preaching to a young man the other day, mm -hmm. and, and he told me, you know, I, I don't 
want to get saved why because i, I said you know it's telling me some videos that were circulating online about this pastor and all that and i told him you know but you know that is just an isolated case no he says no you know i know this and i know this and i began to realize that what has happened over time is that you know we people do not see the light people cannot what they see is a mixture mm -hmm. and they cannot really see the distinction you know the distinction between the the true body of christ the body of christ that is on fire for god and the religious body you know what is religion religion is just man's way of trying to find god it is traditions it's following rituals you know and, and largely you find that that spirit of religion is what has killed the move of god and so i i believe that we are at a time when god has to bring revival we are at a time when we have to see a move of the holy spirit and for us to get to that place we have to first realize that we have fallen you know we have fallen from the place we expected to be we are not the powerful church we're supposed to be we are not having the impact even in the nation i mean getting back to john the baptist mm -hmm. Can you imagine shaking the whole of Kenya where people are not running to witch doctors? People are not running to, you know, they don't want to be corrupt anymore. People don't want to do this anymore. And they just run and say, what can we do to be saved? You know, the other thing I was also thinking about, now talking about again the church, is you look at the very beginning of the church. The Bible says that John, I mean, Peter preached, you know, the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down. And he preached what is very interesting. He never made an altar call. Mm -hmm. It is the people who asked, what must we do to be saved? He didn't have a public address system. He didn't have flyers. He didn't have, you know, a, a worship team, you know. <laughs> and all these things are wonderful. He didn't have lights. He didn't have all these things. But there's something about the presence of God and and we have to get back to that place that is what this book is about that we must get tired of just going through the motions we must get tired of just you know just going to church and get back to that place where we our hearts are burning for god our hearts are hungry for god our hearts desire god you know one of the other things that uh you know shocked me jackson about five no about eight years ago i i prayed for a devil worshiper mm. interestingly that devil worshiper had me when i was on hope fm and called me and said you know i had you on, on radio and i really want you know it's actually the relatives who heard and then they called they told me to pray for this young girl and 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 this young girl i mean revealed so much that i don't have time to talk about uh, but revealed so much about you know their practices in this city and all over the nation and all that uh, but there's one shocking revelation that she said and and that tells so much about the church and and where we are so she told she told me that they would go of course they would go in a spiritual form and they would be sent to attack churches and so they moved to so many different churches around uh, Nairobi and she said there's one particular congregation where which had more than 2000 people mm -hmm. but when they got into this congregation there were only four people only four people who had the fire over them only four only four <laughs> you know out of more than 2000 which meant people who are i mean those four are the only ones who are hungry for god who are in prayer you know who are seeking god the rest are just coming to church the rest don't probably don't even know they've come to church maybe to meet their friends or you know so i began to realize we have to get a move of god we have to have a revival we have to get back to that place where it's all about Jesus. It's not about us building our own kingdoms. It's not about us, you know, making all these things that we've been doing, you know, which again, uh, one of the things I've written in this book is something that I, you know, I found somewhere on the, I think on the internet, mm -hmm. there was this 
uh, uh, he was a reverend, Episcopal reverend, who, who made a statement and said, if the Holy Spirit was to leave the earth, many churches would not even recognize his left. Because 90% of the church, of regular church activities, are just planned. They're just programs. They're just activities that, that people don't give room to the Holy Spirit. And, and then we wonder why we don't see miracles. We wonder why, you know, people don't come to church when they are sick and get healed. We wonder why we don't see, you know, people delivered from, from demonic spirits, you know. And, and the real church, just as it was in the beginning, we are not seeing that kind of power, you know. And, and I also believe, and, and I've also written about that in this book, because this is really an introduction, it's an overview. I believe that we must get back to that place where we are a real altar for God. Mm. Because what is an altar? An altar should be a place of connection. It should connect what is supernatural to the natural. You know, an altar should be a place of exchange where God's power, you know, can come down and, and people will be healed. An altar must be a place where there is fire, where there is you know, the, the things are happening, you know, actually reminds me of the book of Joel. The Bible says in the book of Joel chapter 2 and verse 17, it's a prayer for revival. It says, let the priests, let the ministers of God, you know, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare your people, O God. Do not make us a reproach among the heathen. Why should the people say, where is their God? And, and when I read that scripture more, I realized that, you know, in the old temple, it had this porch where, you know, the lame, the blind, the cripples, all these people would come. And, and, and then there was, of course, the altar. The altar is supposed to be this place which is dedicated to connect to God. But the Bible is saying there has to be a people who can stand between this porch and the altar and cry. So there has to be a people who will recognize and say, there has to, we have to connect these two, you know. Power must flow from the altar and touch these sick people, you know. So it says, where, where is God? Where is our God? And we know that David prayed the same prayer, you know. We, we all know this song as the deer pants for the waters. And, and, you know, we like singing that song. But when you go to Psalm 42 and see when, how David prays that prayer, he says, you know, when you go on, he says, my tears have become my meat day and night. Mm -hmm. While those, you know, who keep asking me, and I hear those who keep asking me, where is your God? There are people who are listening to us, Jackton, who are at a place where they're giving up. Yeah, I actually feel it right now. There's somebody who is listening, who is watching, who, who, who is feeling suicidal. They feel like they're giving up. They, they don't know what to do. Uh, and, and maybe just to pause a little bit, I want to speak to this person. Don't give up on life. God has a purpose for you. Don't commit suicide. God loves you. All you need is to just give your life to Jesus Christ. And before we leave, we'll give you that opportunity. Uh, but getting back to this place, there, there, there are people who, you know, who are so broken. And that's where, you know, David was. Because when you read on, I think verse 4, he says, I remember how I used to go to the temple and how I would dance and, and then my soul is bowed down within me. What is he saying? You know, people see a disconnect between my going to church, talking about this powerful God, this mighty God, this awesome God, and the kind of life that I'm living. And he says, God where are you? I mean, this is a desperate Christ, like as the deer pants for the waters. I want to see you. I want you to show up in my life. I want you to, 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 to perform a miracle. I want you to show yourself strong, you know. And, and, and because the people, the situations, um, I feel something, and the Holy Spirit just keeps ministering. I feel there's somebody who needs a miracle, who has HIV AIDS, and we're going to believe God with you, but believe God for a miracle. There is nothing impossible with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's nothing impossible. So, uh, all these conditions, whether it's AIDS, whether it's cancer that is ravaging our people, the whole question is, it's asking, where is 
our God. If the church moves in the power of God, if the church experiences what was happening at Pentecost, we should actually not be having sick people in church. I mean, look through the scriptures. I, I, I've, I've tried to look through the scriptures, and, and maybe someone might correct me, but I've not seen prayers for healing within the church. Almost all the miracles you read about in the, in the New Testament, the book of Acts, where for people who were, you know, in the streets, the cripple outside, you know, it, there, there was a certain grace, if I could use that word, that there was, apart from that man who listened to Peter, you know, and fell because he was sleeping, you know, and, and died and, and he had to be resurrected. Mm. You, you don't really see the kind of, 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 of sicknesses. And I believe it just shows that there is a problem. We need to get back to that place where we can experience not just healing, but the supernatural health. We must get to that place where we can experience God, you know, in our lives. And, and, and I like, I like sharing, sharing testimonies, you know, because for me, and I probably alluded to it last week, for me, my introduction to God was a miracle. My introduction to God was, you know, as I said, I think I, think I said it last week, when my little brother was healed of a heart condition. And, and I, I, I struggle to believe in a gospel devoid of miracles. In fact, one of the scriptures that I like so much is this scripture in 1 Corinthians 4.20. It says the kingdom of God is not a matter of words, but power. And, and we must experience that God. That is what upsetting the status quo is all about. Mm -hmm. That, you know, we have to get back to that place where we say, Lord, we are not contented with the way we are. I am not contented with my life. I have to, I have to reveal your power. I have to reveal. There has to be something in my life mm -hmm. that people can look at and say, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Mm. There has to be something in your life, Jackton, in my life, that people can look at and say, this is not because he's qualified. This is not because he has money. This is the hand of God. You know? and, and I believe that as we get closer to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, there are going to be such a people that God is going to use, you know, they, they don't even have to be pastors. They don't have to be, but they're just going to be so hungry for God to move in their families, in their lives. That, and that is what this book is all about, to stir up that kind of person, you know, for you to get to a place of saying, there must be more. There must be more. It can't just be, you know, just going through a, you know, through a program or just doing this. We have to experience God in my family. I, I'm tired of people asking me, where is your God? I'm tired of people saying, oh, you're going to church, but we don't see that reflected in your family. We don't see that reflected, you know. And, and I, you know, I'm, I'm talking about things I have seen. I mean, I shared a little bit of my testimony. We used to be, you know, with my mother. I said that my mother was a single mom. And uh, we were so poor. We were so poor. We had uh, this one room, you know, one room which was our everything. You know, it was our bedroom, it was our kitchen, it was our bathroom, you know. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, a simple place. And, but I would be in that room when I began to learn about God and the miracles. You know, I, began, I realized that when God wants to save a family, he will save, he will save a man, he will save a woman. And, and that person that God has saved is the one to reveal God is the one to break the pattern it could be a pattern of poverty it could be a pattern of disease it could be you know whatever it is you are the one so i would be in that small room you know my mom's bed is on the other side and my bed is on this this other extreme side and i began to pray i would wake up at night you know maybe three in the morning and pray and pray on that bed and 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 and, and begin to declare things in in the natural it seemed like there was no hope at that time and, and I began to say, God is going to help us. God is going. So I would come tell my mother. She was also a believer, but she would always ask me, you know, how come God is speaking to you? You know, he's not telling me anything. Because mm -hmm. God began to show me 
that he was going to move us he was going to bless us you know and, and long story short the mom god really opened doors and things began to happen and and i you know i well, the time I was finishing, because I was studying in Uganda, there was this, you know, all level, A levels. By the time I was finishing my all level, we were so broke. I was, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but I was mm -hmm. working at a building site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mentioned it, mm -hmm. and and then God brought us, God brought someone. I mean, got a scholarship, ended up going to the university. The moment I got my first job, I was able to build my mother a house, and and she looked at it. I remember when she saw it, she was like. I got a vision and I saw a green roof and God transformed our lives. You know, what am I saying? Miracles are not just about material things, but there is something that that did to the people that knew us. People are like, it pays to serve God. It pays to wait on God. So when we talk about the power of God, we must begin to shine the light of God. The church must rise out of a place of just a comfort zone. It must rise out of a place of just uh, where it is just a nice thing to be a Christian. Because it's more than that. Jesus didn't die so we can just have nice lives, you know, and, and, and drive cars or have houses, all that. No, no, no. Jesus died so he could work through us. We are his body. We are the ones that are supposed to be his hands and touch people, you know, and, and, and reach to those that are, that are sick and, and, and help those that are oppressed. And we cannot be that just having this laid back uh, posture. We must know that we have a responsibility. We are the John the Baptists of our day. Mm -hmm. We are the ones that are supposed to usher in this great move of God that is going to cause the world to know that Jesus is alive. So that uh, that that is you know a little bit of, of the introduction. I know I've, I've talked a lot, but I'm getting fired up. Maybe you need to say something, and then yeah. I can continue. Yeah, I, I've really um, learned a thing or two regarding that area of our lives where. Um, uh, we, we really need to desire uh, to see the move of God in our lives, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, through what you, uh, you have written in your book regarding uh, the fact that we are living in the last hour yes. and uh, things that are happening, even as the word of God will, will tell us that um, these are perilous times mm -hmm. and uh, we see things happening. Just like you wrote, let me read this part. Yes. We see the, the issue of uh, AIDS Mm -hmm. the, the, the AIDS scourge, terrorism, mm -hmm. violent crime, natural mm -hmm. catastrophes, mm -hmm. and disasters are taking their toll and leaving uh, fear in the hearts of people in their wake. And um, another sentence here where you have, uh, you have told us regarding how internet has come mm -hmm. and uh, it has been accessible to teens and uh, young adults. There's the mm -hmm. issue of um, pornography, occultism, satanism and violence in magnitudes never imagined before and as you mm -hmm. were talking about uh, the whole scenario of um, us uh, being the children of god now being um, likened to john the baptist of yes. old mm -hmm. uh, uh, bringing that revival and uh, you know upsetting the mm -hmm. status quo i, I would like to ask uh, uh, you uh, where where do we start where do we begin from because um, after all has been said and done realizing that uh, what is happening mm -hmm. is uh, really causing a lot of um, you know a fear as, as you have put it here mm -hmm. fear and uh, even lack of faith regarding mm -hmm. what tomorrow may hold for us and all that people are living a life that is hopeless yes so wh yes. where do we begin so the, the first thing we must get to is um, we have to realize where we are and, and that's a good you know good question that you brought up the Bible says in the book of Psalms if the foundations are destroyed what can the righteous do okay so the foundations have been destroyed there, there is so much evil you know, but as I said, it, that shouldn't surprise us because the Bible says in the last days, there's going to be so much evil. But the challenge that we have as the body of Christ, and that's why I mentioned about, you know, like the church in, uh, in, 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 in South Korea mm -hmm. or the church in Indonesia, Indonesia yeah. is to get back to the basics. 
to get back to the pure gospel, to get back to that place where we are genuinely seeking God and God alone and nothing else. We, we are not, you know, in this gospel of, of um, you know, as we call it, a commercialized gospel where it's just about what I can get out of it. Um, because largely that's what uh, the, ki the kind of gospel really we have preached, and I'm also a minister, is what has caused people to think it's all about what I can get. But, but really following Christ is not about what we can get. Christ said, if you want to follow me, you must carry your cross, you know, and deny yourself and follow me. So there has to be that place where we have to get back to the cross. We have to get back to that place of, of, of loving him and serving him. You know, one of the things I was sharing at our church is uh, when you look at the Lord's Prayer, for example, the Bible says, you know, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, you know, your kingdom come, your will be done. And then it says, give us this day. But as a pastor, I found out that more than 90% of the requests people bring to me are all about give us this day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's all about my marriage or lack of it, you know, my children, my healing and all these things that we are asking for. Yet, if we were praying correctly and we, are, we know God is our Father, we don't even have to ask. You know, if we really know how much He loves us, you know, if we were to get back to, I'm talking about the foundation, so the real foundation is us connecting back to God. Just being about seeking Him, seeking His kingdom and His righteousness. And He says, all these other things will be added to us. So we, 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 we have to get back to that foundation and say, God, all I want is you. I desire you. I'm going to seek you. It's, it's not about what your hand is going to do for me. It's not about what I expect from you, but I just want to serve you. I just want to love you. And, and which... As I say, it took me back. I looked at those South Koreans. I was like, man, these guys have everything. Mm. Why are they praying like they are so desperate, <laughs> you know? And I said, if, if you took out the need for marriage and the need for a car and the need for a visa and the need for food out of the African church, would we still have Keshas? Mm. Would we still go to Katoloni and go to the prayer mountain to pray? Would we still have that passion if not, then it means that there is a place in us where we have just reduced God just to what he can give us. And yet Paul, you know, wrote and said, you know, I just want to know Christ. Whatever I considered gain, I now count it but loss. So we have to get back to those basics as the church of Jesus Christ. We have to question ourselves. You know, there's this thing I, I wrote here that I'll just read. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when the Bible talks about John the Baptist... Uh, and it says, John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. He interrupted the ordinary course of events. And to, signif to emphasize the significance of this man, Jesus said from the days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. So when I skip down, it says, preparing for the second coming of Jesus is what this book is all about. This preparation will be by the remnant church of God. Like John's mandate, God is raising a generation that will turn people back to the Lord their God. You know, John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. What did Elijah do? Elijah asked people, for how long shall we waver between two opinions? For how long shall we be neither hot nor cold? For how long shall we just be going through church as a tradition, a religious tradition? For how long shall we just sit back and let people die? I mean, and not preach the gospel, you know? So you get back to that place and says, make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So that is our mandate. We have to get back. I pray that Kenya, we will hear what God is saying in this season and, and get back to that place that we have had that happened in the 70s, in the 60s, even in the 90s where, you know, crusades were everywhere and, and, and posters of crusades were everywhere and, and people were flooding all these places. Uh, because we that's what we need when we get back to that place where we can shake 
the nation where our voice is relevant, our voice is credible, then we have upset the status quo. Mm -hmm. Awesome that you have mentioned that area of um, turning back to the Lord, as in encouraging people to turn back to the Lord. And you've also shared the, the, the issue of uh, making people ready, uh, 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 people make ready, are people prepared for the Lord as yes. well, and uh, go forth in the spirit and the power of Elijah. You see, uh, as we live uh, here, especially now, as we are talking about the context of our nation here in Kenya, the state of, um, we would call it state of the church, and uh, what we would desire to happen in our country. I believe um, that we are the agents of change. Amen. It begins with us. And uh, that, that, that area that you have just um, alluded to, the fact that we need to go back to the basics. Yes. Uh, that challenges me as well, looking at uh, where I'm at, especially here on radio. Every other time uh, we're given an opportunity to come on air, I believe it's an opportunity for me also to remind myself where we are heading mm -hmm. and even as i tell the listener every other day day in day out of the need to make the commitment to allow jesus christ to be lord and savior yes. and have an intentional relationship with him and so mm. I, I thank you for that encouragement that you are giving us and so even for someone who is uh, receiving us right now probably has joined us for the very first time didn't join us last week you can give us a bit of uh, details on where they can get this book because i know somebody yes. is already having that appetite i only need this book by <laughs> pastor andrew mutana how yes. can i get it where will i get it and how much is it okay thank you i almost forgot i got carried away <laughs> So the book is, uh, is, uh, is very affordable. It's only 500 shillings. Uh, if you want to get this book, just, ra just call or text this number. 0710-640-240. 0710-640-240. If, if you are in need of that book being delivered, we can deliver it to you. If you're in Nairobi... It's just for about only 200 shillings. If you're outside, we can still make an arrangement. In fact, they had, last week we got some, someone from Homa Bay, you know, ah. who got the book, and some people from Nairobi. Uh, so we will get the book to you. If you want to come to Westlands, uh, Impact Church is located at Poovy House, which is uh, right next to the Nairobi Street Kitchen or across from the Westlands Post Office. You can always come and we will be you can be able to buy it from you know from our church uh, yes and then you can also go online you know we have uh books available in an online format uh, on amazon.com they're available for those who are listening outside the country that upsetting the status quo is there as well as other books and and also you know you could even visit our website we have a website global impact ministry Dot org so that way you should be able to get the book mm -hmm. yes and, and i can see you know time runs so fast <laughs> when we're here i feel like we need to take time and pray for someone yes. who wants to give their life to jesus uh i i felt a very strong sense that there are people who are so discouraged and people who are weary mm -hmm. And you feel like giving up on life. Somebody's listening to us and you feel life has been so hard for you and you feel like giving up. Don't give up. Jesus is the answer. Jesus has a great plan for you. And so at, right now, we are going to pray for you and God will encounter you where you are. You're going to encounter the power of God and your life will not be the same again. I want you to repeat with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me on the cross. I surrender my life to you. Fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Cause me to live a life that honors you, that brings glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I also want to pray for those people. You're listening. We have about two minutes. I want to pray for you. You're listening to us and you're sick. Maybe you're in a hospital bed or, you know, the doctors, whatever the doctors have said, there is power in the name of Jesus to heal every sickness. Amen. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of sickness and infirmity. We bind that spirit of disease in the name of Jesus. We command you to loose that man, loose that woman. 
every every form of 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 cancer or arthritis or stomach problems or headaches or whatever it is we command you to leave those bodies right now in the name of jesus, name of jesus. and father god right now even through these airwaves we, we release the power of god we release the power of god to touch that man to touch that woman to remove every deafness every problem in the eyes and lord we declare that they are healed in jesus mighty name and we give you the praise and we give you the glory in jesus name we pray amen, amen. Please, if you have you know, been praying, just check yourself. Our God is a miracle working God and take your miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It has been a joy hosting you, Pastor Andrew Mutana from Impact Church in Nairobi. And for somebody who would like to come to church, yes. tell them where you are at. Probably they would like to come fellowship with you. Yes. So you're welcome. You're welcome to come and visit us. Uh, as I said, our church is in Westlands. Westlands, uh, if you need directions, you can send a text to 0710-640-240. Or if you come to Westlands, it's very easy. You just alight where there's a Nivas, and then you just walk, just a walking distance, about 200 meters. Mm -hmm. You'll see that building. It's a yellow building called Povey House. We're on the third floor. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we'll look forward to, to, to having you and, you know, visit and we'll pray for you. And particularly for the ones that, you know, just gave their lives to Jesus Christ, I encourage you, you know, wherever you are, find a Bible-believing church. Find a church that believes in Jesus and, and be part of that church and your life will be transformed. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor. Looking forward to hosting you next week, God willing. We continue yeah. with a look at this book. It's a loaded book. I tell you, get it. It's titled Upsetting the Status Quo. How to Become a Career of Revival to Your Generation. I just need to repeat that number. For the sake of somebody who didn't get the number, it is 0710-640-240. Once again, 0710-640-240 uh, for inquiries regarding this book. It goes for uh, uh, 500 shillings, yes, yes within Nairobi. Uh, right there, and you will uh, be able to receive what God has in store for you. Pastor? Uh, I pray that God will continue to bless you all the Amen. more. And we look forward to having a wonderful uh, conversation next week. Amen. 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 And we were also live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on X. Get us there and you can share it with others. Right about now, we're just about to go to the top of the hour. But we have a song here that uh, is from uh, Worship Army. And the song is titled Namini.